see. Ready, 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 ready. Very good. Okay. So, bab enam, enam, imbangan juga. Okay. So, uh, in last class, to, towards the end of the class, uh, I quickly brought up this chapter, Imbangan Dugo, and I explain this six thing, which you must know, uh, the Abad game. All right. So the asset, belanja, pilan, on the debit side, and then on the credit side will be your L liability, hasil, and modal. All right. So last class, almost the end of the class, I brought this six thing, a, ba, li, and I say in order to do. Your imbangan juga, you must know this thing. Inside your head, inside your heart. If you don't know this, then it's a bit hard. But if you know this by heart, then it won't be hard. Alright? So, if it's in your heart, dalam hati awak, then dia tak akan jadi susah, hard. Okay? So, with this thing, actually, I already given you the the thing, the format here for imbangan duga. Is it not? So, all the asset, A, B, A, Avalim, uh, asset belanja ambilan is in the debit side of your imbangan duga. By the way, this is bentuk T. So, same, in imbangan duga, there is bentuk T and bentuk penyata. Bentuk T and bentuk penyata or larger. Alright? So, for bentuk T is, you got a T lah, and then Avalim. Very simple. All the asset you throw it here. All the belanja you throw here. All the model you put here. All the liability you put here. Has you put here. All right. So this is bentuk key. Okay. And then when you go to penyata, very simple. You just jump all everything together. Like here, the aba link like that. Just that yang aba dalam debit right. So you put here yang LHM itu the figure amount to you put in credit side. So this is the imbangan juga. Okay, so how do we apply this to the question? Very easy. Okay, so uh, this one, last week I already explained. Okay, so if you were not here, please refer back to last class uh, recording. All right, so very simple. So with the abalim, actually you can do it yourself. We haven't done it. Okay, so all the asset belanja ambilan will be debit, all right? So you just see what is prabot. Prabot is an asset. So if asset debit, pinjaman, a liability, l got mana on the credit side. So pinjaman is a uh, in the credit side. Ambilan, ambilan the a is here for the, the under debit side. So you. Take the debit. So you can do it uh, for your own exercise as well. All right, but I already explained it in last class for the first question. So you can refer back. Okay. So now I will go into question two. I have to do 2A and 2B. All right. So this is a typical uh, thing. All right. And then they want you, they give you the information. This is the information. All right. So they tell you modal is how much, parabola is how much. Okay. They give you the amount. All right. But now we have to susunkan. We have to arrange it, susunkan, so that dia jadi satu imbangan duga. What is imbangan duga again? Imbangan duga in English, what do we call it? We call it a trial balance. Or we call it shortcut TB. So if you go to company like now, I'm doing audit, right? Okay, I'm doing uh auditing or assurance. Okay, in one of the big four. Okay, the big four accounting called EY. So now I'm working at EY. So I work there and I do audit. 
So I will be seeing a lot of this thing, trial balance. Ah, so the client, meaning our client will be the, the company, okay? They will give us their document. So in their document, they will have all this trial balance in BM called Imbangan Duga. And then they not only give us trial balance, they have to give us all the penyata kewangan, which we will learn in Bab 790. So why do we need this? This Imbangan Duga is actually help us to do in, uh, the penyata kedudukan kewangan, the penyata, uh, sorry, the account perdagangan, the account untung negeri, all this, we call it a penyata kewangan, right? Without imbangan duga, you can't do that. That's why we must come to bab 6 dulu, then only we work to bab 7. All right, so this is a trial balance, TB in English, but in BM, we call it imbangan duga. And last class, I say what? The, your imbangan duga must be what? Must be imbang, meaning balance. That's why it's called child balance. Maksudnya, dia mesti sama. Balance, imbang. Right? If debit is 2 ringgit, credit side is 1 ringgit, imbang dah. No, tak imbang. So when it is tak imbang, maksudnya, there is something wrong. I have to readjust again. Right? So when you readjust it, that's what we call a pelarasan. Okay, so this polarization later we learn in Bab 8. Uh, polarization is actually a sangat, uh, one of the big topics in your Form 4. Right, I think Bab 8 is the largest topic. Lah, right? Because Bab 8 ada banyak uh, benda that you have to learn. Like what? Like susut nilai, hutang lapo, penguntukan hutang ragu, you heard it, might heard it before, but now in Bak Lapan, we have to calculate them. We have to understand how do we record in a penyata kewangan? How do we hitungkan? Alright, so now let's do the question for this imbangan duga dulu. We don't go so far yet, stay here. Alright, so question two. Let me bring out my... Excel. Okay. Question two. Are you guys ready for question two? If yes, give me a two in the chat box. Okay, ready? Okay, 2A. Alright, so 2A, kita nak bentuk T dulu. So let's do the bentuk T. Alright, so uh, in your bentuk T, of course, whenever we do all this imbangan duga thing, kita mesti ada nama perniagaan dulu. Alright, nama perniagaan lepas tu tajuk. What is the tajuk for this uh, thing? All right, so in the middle, so one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, la. five. Key. And the, the number of again, so what is the name of the syarikat? Syarikat Dynamics. So, Syarikat Dynamics. Alright, Syarikat Dynamics. After that, what is the tajuk? So, you put here. Uh, this is the Imbangan Duga pada tarikh 30th April 2020. So, just copy. Imbangan Duga pada 30 April 2020. Okay, so this is the tajuk. We don't have to mention bentuk T lah. Alright, we know that we have to do bentuk T. 
you just put the tajuk. That's it. Okay, then here will be all your amount, lah, right? So here you put ringgit Malaysia, and here you put ringgit Malaysia. Okay, so now we go one by one, All right? So leave it here first. So let's analyze this thing here. So based on what? Based on our uh, uh, lean. Oh, actually this one, all right? So, uh, this is too ugly. Let me write it. Aba, D. So you must know uh, what does A stand for, B stand for, A stand for. A stand for asset, B stand for belanja, A stand for ambulance, L for liability, H for hasil, M for modal. So with this six thing, we put it here. Because all of this must be one of these six things. Right? Mesti, memang, guarantee. Alright? Okay. So, modal. Should we the first M? Betul tak? Perabot. Asset. A. Kelengkapan. Asset. Kenderaan, asset juga, commission D terima. Commission, when you see a D terima, it is a hasil. Because it's income otherwise hasil. Hasil means income. When you terima commission, it jadi satu income. is a hasil. That's why it's a H. And then ambilan is your A here. Pulangan belian. So, pulangan belian is the opposite of your uh, belian. Alright? So, what you can do is, is belian is in belanja, right? So, B, but it's a contra. Alright? It's called contra. So, you put like that. Okay? It's not belong to your belanja. Because it's a pulangan belian. If it is a belian, then it's belanja. But it is a pulangan belian. Maksudnya, if it's a B in the debit side, then your contract, it becomes on the credit side. Later, I will show you. Alright? Then, alat tulis. You just follow the sign. Alat tulis is a belanja. Belanja, then the B. It's a stationary. So, a stationary, alat tulis all this pen, all this thing. We don't count it as an asset. Kenapa dah boleh do it as an asset? Because ada tak dia bawa income? Ada tak dia boleh guna more than one uh, satu, uh, enam bulan or one year? Normally in a company when you buy, you will buy a lot of alat to list. Banyak pen, banyak eraser. Right? Because we use this and then we buang it already. Right? Therefore all this is a belanja. That's why it's a B. Alright? Then, tunai di tangan is tunai. Tunai is sell. Right. Tunai di bank. Sell. It's bank. Okay. Now, belian. B belian for your belanja. So, it will be B as well. Alright. Then, your inventory awal. So, your inventory awal. Inventory is an asset. So, A. So far, are you following? If yes, give me an F in your chat box. For following. All right. So you must know class. What what is all this thing? Is actually classification. If you don't know, you forget your classification, or you may not know what is a classification. I can tell you now. After class. You go to your recording, Bab 2. There's a chapter for classification. After watching that recording, I 100% guarantee you, 
you will know, you will understand what I'm saying now. All right, after watching the classification in your bug two under form four, all right. Okay, continue. Your ABT account volume terima. Account volume terima is a asset, lah. All right. Discount debury. When you see a debury, discount debury is a you see B here. Maksudnya, this is a belanja because you berikan discount kepada orang lain. So when you give discount to other people, other people will pay us lesser. Makes sense or not? If let's say kita us we, and then this is Jeffrey. Right. Let's say Jeffrey buy barang from us. It is one hundred ringgit. Tapi kita berikan discount to Jeffrey. How much discount? Let's say twenty ringgit. So at first is hundred ringgit. Kita tolakkan twenty ringgit. Maksud Jeffrey perlu bayar berapa ringgit kepada kita? Eighty ringgit. Is it or not? We are supposed to receive. Kita supposed to terima 100 ringgit. Pas sekarang kita hanya terima 80 ringgit. What all about this 20 ringgit? Tak ada lah. So that's why when kita berikan discount, the discount debury is a B belanja. Right? Same thing. When kita terima discount, we pay less to other people. So in another way, kita untung. Kita hasil is a hasil, so discount details. That's why I say when you see you see a deterima is a hasil. When you see a debury will be a belanja. All right, kada bayaran B. You buy ama buy ama mesti belanja. Belanja you see still we tell you belanja rinci belanja. So this is in the B. Angkutan kalau when I will see angkutan belanja. What is angkutan again? Angkutan means shipping fee, transportation fee. Delivery fee. All this about transport punya hantar barang. All this are angkutan, angkutan. Right? But we got angkutan masuk and angkutan keluar. Macam here, sini, you can see. So how do we differentiate them? I'm sure later I'll explain it again. But I'll explain now first. So that you can understand what is angkutan keluar and angkutan masuk. But same, both of them are belanja because they are angkutan. But in a different way. Okay? So, let me give an example. Okay. Example. Mm. Okay. So, let's say... What do we want to sell today? Ah, huh? let's say we sell um nasi lemak. Yeah, contoh ah, let's say nasi lemak is our barang ni again now because kita jual nasi lemak. Okay, but how do we make a nasi lemak for the this plate? Become a nasi lemak on a nasi lemak ada apa? Ada nasi, alright. Lepas tu you ada uh, satu telur. Okay. Then you ada timur. The cucumber. Betul tak? Lepas tu you mesti ada apa? Uh, satu ayam goreng. Ni drumstick. Alright. So this is your nasi lemak. And of course, memang mesti ada Sambar kat sini. Nasi lemak mesti ada sambar. Kan? Okay, so this is a nasi lemak. So, uh, other than this, kita ada ikan bilis dan kacang juga. Alright, so this is a complete nasi lemak. So, nasi lemak ada telur, ada ayam, ada nasi, ada uh, ini, sambar. Lepas tu, kacang dan ikan bilis. Okay, then ini uh, timun. Betul tak? And where do we get all these ingredients from? Dari tanah. Is it kita tanam sendiri? Bukan. Isn't it? So normally, kita akan beli sambal atau beli telur, beli ayam, beli telur dari mana? 
uh, supermarket. 99 market. Betul tak? Ah, telur je satu satu kotak punya. Then timur dari, you know, you pergi pasar bagi, you beli dari matrik tu, patrik tu, you beli ayam. Okay? So, all this will be what? Your cost, uh, sorry, uh, your belian. Under your cost challenge. Actually, I haven't learned that far yet, but I just let you know. All right, how to make up. So this, in order for you to sell nasi lemak, let's say you jual. Kat RM, you ada ayam goreng sekarang rate kat Kuala Lumpur. Around 10 ringgit. Okay, mahal. Ada ayam goreng. Okay, so you jual kat 10 ringgit. Satu nasi lemak. Tapi, when you sell 10 ringgit, doesn't mean, that, doesn't mean that you untung semua 10 ringgit. Dalam 10 ringgit ini, you perlu beli semua benda ni. So you have, all this is your belanja or your belian. Do you get what I mean now? If yes, you give me a why in the chat box. I'll give you an example. So when we say kita jual 10 ringgit, doesn't mean that kita untung semua 10 ringgit. Because in this 10 ringgit, I have to pay for all the ingredients. Semua benda ni. All the ayam, we think ayam free ah. Uh, drop from the sky ah. Jatuh daripada langit ah. No, you have to buy from somewhere. All this kacang you have to buy. Okay, so now, imagine a lot of things change after COVID-19. Agree? Back then, normally, okay, I mean back then lah, usual lah, okay, biasanya, okay, when your ibu wants to get sayur, they go to pasar pagi or supermarket. They have to walk in, drive there and beli. But during COVID-19 pandemic period, what happens? A Asia, grab, semua buat apa? Delivery uh, for this sayur-sayur. Do you know that? If yes, you give me a one. Right? Or if your, your macam pun ada beli daripada online. Right, we call you beli sayur daripada online, kan? Right? So, when you beli daripada online, what happens? You, you think you beli dari grab, ada satu grab, ada satu part is for market, like uh, grocery shopping, right? So, if you buy from grab, grab help you, help you to deliver from door to door service, you think it's free, ah? You have to pay to the Grab. So the Grab is actually delivering all the things to you and I have to pay Grab. So that thing is called an angkutan. And it is called angkutan maso. It is a... Uh, how do I put it? Uh, in words, something... Delivery. Maksud, let's say, uh, come back uh, to our story, to our imagination. What are we doing now? We are selling nasi lemak. Alright? So now, kita nak order from online. Alright? I order all the sayur, all the timun, all the telur, all the ayam from online. So, mereka akan deliver to sayur. To ke kedai kita. So when they deliver all the sayur to us, they transport the whole thing. I just have to pay the delivery fee, which is the angkutan masuk. Because they, the things come in, right? Baron comes in. So at the same time, I have to pay the delivery fee. So this is called angkutan yang masuk. Siapa yang bayar? Kita yang bayar. That's why it is, when you bayar, it is a belanja. Does it make sense to you? If yes, you give me a why again. Okay, so now you know what is the angkutan yang maso. Alright, so what about angkutan keluar? Okay, so same with this contoh, your nasi lemak can now 
because of COVID-19, what we can do now? We can sell through, grab food, Shopee food, or Panda. Panda food. Betul tak? Alright? Okay, now. Of course, normally all this fee, kita yang bayar, the consumer. Siapa yang beli, dia bayar. Let's say today you want to, you want to buy McDonald's. So when you buy McDonald's from the grab food, then we have to pay the delivery fee. Okay, that one is not an angkutan keluar. Okay, what is the angkutan keluar? Angkutan keluar is, let's say, now because we are new, right? This nasi lemak is not that popular yet. So what we do, we get about promotion, promosi. This is it. So now I say, okay, lah. Sepa from um uh, from hari ni, nine of August twenty twenty two, sampai thirty first of August twenty twenty two. Because bulan ni bulan kemerdekaan, so kita buat satu promosi where sepa yang online daripada uh, order daripada online, then kita bagi free delivery. Wow, you have the free delivery. Okay, but is it really free? It is free to Sepa. Free to the customer. But Sepa yang tanggungkan cost ini? Who will be the one to pay for this delivery cost? Us. The nasi lemak. Sepa yang join nasi lemak itu, you have to pay for this delivery fee. You think so good ah? Yeah, Kuban is right. Penjual. All right, you think Shopee, uh, Grab, so good ah? Give you free delivery ah? Of course, somebody have to tanggung the cost. The cost have to be somewhere. You think the driver is too so, so nice, okay? Abang baye, what delivery for free ah? Dia pun ada family. Dia pun perlu makan. So, dia mesti ada hasil. Okay, they must have salary in order to survive. Therefore, we they cannot say, oh, give you free then free. Someone have to pay for it. So, at this uh, contoh, siapa yang berikan promosi itu? Siapa yang bayar cost delivery ini? Kita. Is it not? So now, because kita yang hantarkan barang itu keluar, is it not? The keluar, and we are paying. Kita bayar for this angkutan juga. But now the only difference is barang yang itu the nasi lemak is going out to the customer. That's why it is called angkutan keluar delivery for outward out. When we say angkutan masuk, meaning when we buy thing comes in, then we pay for the delivery fee. And now when we sell, we give free shipping. So I have to pay for the delivery fee, which is called the angkutan keluar. So both, siapa yang bayar? Kita yang bayar. So when it's a buyer, therefore it's a belanja. Do you understand? If yes, you give me a you for understand in the chat box. So both of these, angkutan masuk, angkutan keluar, belanja. All right. But later when you go to bab seven, you can see that where we put this angkutan masuk and where we put this angkutan keluar. All right. They put it in different place. Okay. So, all right. Go back to our question. So now clear all this angkutan keluar. Okay. Next account belum. Bayar. Belum bayar, liability. Okay? Discount determines it. Determine, we terima discount. Whenever you see determine, H lah, hasil. Okay, then pulang dengan jualan. So, a jualan is a hasil. But now is a pulangan opposite of jualan. Then you put a cross there. Just like your pulangan belian. So, we know it's a opposite. Okay? Later, I'll show you how. And then jalan hasil 
And then promosi is a belanja because when you promote, just like tadi, when you bagikan promosi, kita have to pay. Kita yang bayar promosi, cost promosi too. So it's a belanja. Then gaji, yes, you have to pay juga. So whenever you think of something that you perlu bayar, so bayar, you see, no, the B bayar is for your belanja. All right, therefore, you have to pay for your gaji salary. And is a belanja. All right? Is it all clear? If yes, type C in a chat box. That's why I keep saying, must get your classification right. Okay, when your classification, classification is just like your foundation, your basic. If your basic is good, then the rest should be no problem. But if your base is bad, then no matter how good is on your top, at the end, you will still fall. You know what I mean? Just like a building. Now, you know a building. Let's say a KLCC or whatever building you are staying at. Okay? So let's say a KLCC. Do you know that before you build a KLCC, you must see other oops a foundation so at first before you see a KLCC they will go and dig the ground okay so for one two three years they will work on the foundation this is called a foundation The base, all right. So from here, they'll put all the the thing, you know. Okay, and then all the concrete wall. So this is the foundation. They build it strong enough. Then only here they start to build the first floor, second floor, third floor. Blam 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 blam, and at the end it becomes a a KLCC. Same goes for all the tall building. So for a very if in order the the taller it becomes or the taller it wants to be, okay, the lower it has to go. So that you can hold up. So if like let's say for a country like Japan or some other countries that always have earthquake, Mao earthquake like uh Taiwan, all right, their foundation must they have their foundation must be stronger. So that suddenly shake, they can hold it, hold the building. If here is like sheet, you just shake a while, the holding will come down. Ah. That's why same thing. No matter how good it looks on the top, sinita baye, inila, gone. All right. So same. So from starting from bab two, which is the the basic, the foundation, you must. You must master it. Right? After you master that, then only you build on top. If from there you also tap bully, then of course all these things will be like very hard to you. Alright? So make sure you get it right first. All this classification, persembahan perikanan, journal arm, journal has, buku tunai, ledger, then imbangan juga. Later we go into penyata kedudukan kewangan, account perdagangan, account untung rugi, then pelarasan. Then we go to form 5, rekod tak lengkap, then to your SPM, then you, you see for the paper. Alright? Okay. So now, after doing all this thing, then how do we put into our imbangan juga? Hmm. So here, very simple. Very, very simple. So this is your debit side and this is your credit side. Product. All right. So we already know that this M is M and you just look at your abalim. So where is M your model? Where? Debit or credit side? M is in the credit side. So you just put on the credit side model. How much? Ringgit Malaysia, 25,000. Boom. Is it? For about A, A is where? In the debit side asset. So on the debit side, you put your per 
8,500. Kelengkapan aset. So, you know lah where to put. You see, it's very simple. So, I I like Imam Nandugo question. But normally, they, they don't give Imam Nandugo question lah because it's too easy already. Right? So, normally, they will keluarkan penyata kewangan. Uh, but this is like your basic. You must know this thing. You, you must know how they put in here. Why is it in the debit? Why not credit side? Uh, once you understand that, you go into penyata kewangan, then you have somehow you know uh, how it works. Alright, then it will be easier. Okay. Then kenderaan, kenderaan A in the debit lah. You see, asset is in the debit side. Mm, five, six, five, oh. Commission determiner H hasil is in the credit side. So commission determiner. Six nine oh. Then mm -hmm. ambilan debit side. Eight seven oh. Pulangan belian. Okay, see this one ah. Pulangan belian. So you know that the belian, the B, is in the debit side. Okay, so if it's a bullion, it will be in the debit side. But now, it's a pulangan. So it will be opposite. You get what I mean? So that's why I put a cross here, a contra of B. So if it's in the debit side, the contra of debit side will be in the credit side. So here, you put your pulangan bullion. 575. Okay. Then, your alat to list, your B is in the debit side. Alat to list. Channel 20. 290 tangan is an asset. So, asset is in the debit side. 290 tangan, we put 29. Alright, that's cash on hand, meaning it's a cash. Lah. Alright, but when they say 290 the bank, maksudnya the money is in the bank. So you put bank here. So one is account tonight, and the other one is account bank. So two ninety. Hang on, one three six zero. The bank is five eight two. Then bullion B B is in the debit side. Twelve thousand five hundred. Inventory our asset juga in the. Debit side. Three, two, nine. All right. Okay. Then continue. A, B, T. A. You know lah. All the A will be in the debit side. All the asset. Three six three oh is three thousand. Okay, then your discount delivery B delivery two four oh. Kada by a run. Two six five. Kata by an belanja, green cheap. One two five. Angkutan keluar. All this belanja, belanja the B is in the debit side. Angkutan keluar. Five two four. Account belum bayar is a L. L is in the credit side. So here, account belum bayar. So two five 
six o. Discount D thirty mer H H is in the credit side. Hasu is in the credit side. So discount D thirty mer three five four. And the pulangan jualan. So look at this pulangan jualan. A jualan is a hasil. Hasil is where H is in the credit side, a jualan here. But then when we say a pulangan of jualan, so it's opposite of jualan. When you jualan credit, the pulangan, I cross it, meaning the opposite will become in the debit side. So pulangan jualan. Then angkutan masuk, angkutan masuk is a B belanja, B is in the debit side. And then jualan H in the credit side. 18,772. Promo C, B. Thousand four hundred eighty and gaji one thousand four. All right. So after throwing everything, all the figures must be thrown into your imbangan duga. Okay. Then now we have to make sure that debit and credit side must be. Imbang. If tak imbang, meaning your abalim salah. Alright? So now let's try. So after that, here, put a one line double line. And on the credit side, you cannot put here. Uh. If you do something like that, you stop first, you show me, and then let me slap your head, and then I tell you you cannot do that. Alright? Because I told you you must be balanced. Balance means what? Imbang maksud ni sama level. Okay? At the same level. So if this one, of course I cannot put it here because there's number kat sini. So the maximum that I can go is here. Alright? So since the debit side sampai sini, then the credit side must follow lah. At this same level lah. Kat sini lah. Alright? So here. Same level. Then you put one line double line. Okay, then you jumlahkan. All the debit side, use a calculator plus one by one. 8,500 plus 1,250 plus 5,650 plus 870, 220, 1,260, 5,820, 3,290, and everything. And at the end, what do you get? You get... Forty-seven thousand nine hundred and forty-seven in your debit side. Okay. Now, what about your credit side? So, same thing. You add up all these things. Twenty-five thousand plus nine hundred and sixty plus five hundred and seventy-five plus two thousand five hundred and sixty plus three hundred and fifty plus eighteen thousand seven hundred and seventy-two, and then your jumlah will be forty-seven thousand nine hundred and forty-seven. Is it the same? The answer is yes. So this is what imbang, correct or not? So imbang. That's why this is called imbangan duga. Do you understand? If yes, you give me a yes in the chat box. So at the end, you put, 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 put debit credit based on the upper limb. And then, jumlahkan. And then it should be imbang. If ada yang tak imbang, maksud apa? Maksud, ila tak salah lah. The debit, you put into credit. The credit one you put in the debit. Ah, then salah lah. Alright, so make sure ini, you must remember in your head. A ba a b a l h m. A ba li.
All right? Okay. So this is 2A. Is everyone done? If you are done, you give me an A in the chat box, please. Excuse me. All right. Okay. So now let's do B. So B is actually the same thing, the same way of doing it. This is that the format different. Let me raise this first. The format slightly different, but at the end, the answer should be the same. Not should, but it must be the same lah, because they are the same thing. Just that the format is the Okay. So now we do B imang duga bentuk penyata. So B So for this B is bentuk penyata therefore you don't have to do P. All you need to do is just one line. That's it. Yes. So you start off with the name Sharikat Dynamics and then the Imbangan Duga Pada Tikapulu April 2020. Maybe my line is too long, so maybe I can shot this too. All right, then this one we can move. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is a. Is it in the middle? Maybe I'll add one more line. Okay, it's in, it's in it. Sorry, I said OCD when you Okay, this one here. Eh, hey, come on, what's the other cut middle? Huh? Okay, it's in the middle now. But let's see, let's see. Okay, okay, I think this is better. All right, now, so in the middle, and then one line you cut. That is like one, and then satu T, right? So currently, you have to do this thing. Just satu penyata like that, okay? Report, and then here, you put Ringgit Malaysia. Okay, but before that, you must have your debit first. Debit, credit, and then under it, Ringgit Malaysia RMRM. Chindu. So these are the things that you must have in your bentuk penyata. And take note. Biasanya soalan akan uh, keluar bentuk penyata. Bentuk T kurang keluar. All right, so but this one I just need to tell you like how it works, just in case, right? In case mereka keluarkan, then you know how to do lah, all right? But tell you, biasanya apa yang keluar adalah bentuk penyata, all right? So this is the bentuk penyata. Is the debit credit? So you can see that the debit is all here, credit is all here. So you just put into here, all right? So same way. So modal. So now, tadi we do one by one, right? We say modal is M, variable is A. But in real exam, I have to ask you a question. Do you really have that much of time to go through it one by one? Modal is M, variable. Mm, 
or asset kelengkapan apa kelengkapan ah ha? belanja ah eh, bukan macam-macam liability or a or a or asset asset dia okay, bukan asset uh, kenderaan ah uh, i ingat cikgu cakap adalah oh brother by the time we finish all this whole thing sudah 2 jam lah okay so this now i'm just explaining to you that's why i go like a this is ambulance a pengguna ambulans is a contra b alat ni right that but in real exam, this is a very, 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 very simple question. So when you look at model, you should know which part of Abalim it is at. Then you should throw into the question. All right? So now, try to catch up with me. Okay, so go with model. So model is an M in the credit side. So it's just straight away, right? Model ke sini lah, right? So in exam, you must be smart. All right? You may know the answer. But if you are not smart and fast enough, then you will lose as well. You will lose the marks. So you need to be fast. In order to be fast, you must be smart to be fast. All right. So here, 25,000. You put it there. And then parable is what? Asset. Asset. So you just write that first. You don't care because either if it is a debit or credit side, we still be on the same line. All right. So parable is an asset A in the debit side. So under the debit side here, you put. 8,500. Kelengkapan. So, you write there first. Kelengkapan. Kelengkapan. The kelengkapan is an asset. Asset is in the debit side. So, 1,250. Are you okay with it? Are you following? If yes, give me an okay in the chat box. Make sure you get one of me. All right? Okay. Let's continue. Kenderaan. So you just put there. It doesn't matter if it is a debit or credit. All right. This is not a general arm. In general arm, yes, you must leave such a space for your credit side. But in Imangalunga, all the things dalam such a straight line here. So you just list the, only the amount yang dalam debit or credit side. All right. So kenderaan in the asset, in the debit side. So you put 5650 five, oh, dalam debit lah. All right. Then commission determinant. So you write there, commission Determiner. Okay, so commission determiner is a hasil, right? Because of terima. So hasil is in the credit side. So credit side amount here. So you put 690 for your commission determiner. Yeah, ambilan. Ambilan A, A in the asset. So asset is in the debit side. Yeah, 70,000. And then your pulangan belian. A belian is a belanja, belanja is in the debit side. So if belan is in the debit, pulangan belan will be in the credit. You see how I think? All right. So a uh, pulangan belan is five seven five. Okay. Then uh, alat tulis is a belanja. A belanja a B is in the debit side. So debit here you put three two zero. Oh. And then two nine tangan is two nine. And two nine is an asset. Asset is A is in the Debit side and therefore debit tunai 5,820. Belian. B for belanja. So belanja is, a, uh, sorry, belanja is in the debit side. So 12,500. Inventory hour. Inventory hour is asset. A asset, asset is in the debit side based on the abalim. So 3,290 under the debit side. So you do the same thing for all these things. Account belum terima. Account belum terima is an asset. Asset is in the debit side. 3630. Discount debury. Discount debury because of the bury. B for the belanja. Belanja is in the debit side also. So here, you put 240. And then the kada bayaran. Bayaran bayar. Bayar means belanja. Belanja, the B is in the debit side. So uh, kada bayaran 265. And then Belanja straight away tell you the B. The B is in the debit side. Oh, so, so, uh, debit 125. Angkutan keluar Belanja. I told you just now. So, after you write angkutan keluar, the figure put in the debit side. 5, 2, 4. Account belum bayar is a liability. A liability L is in where? In the credit side, so dalam your credit side, you put like uh, ABB two five six four. Then your discount determiner. 
same thing, determiner. So you discount determiner, determiner, hasil, hasil in a credit side. So credit side, 3, 5, 4. Pulangan. Jualan. Jualan is a hasil. Hasil will be in the credit side. But now this is a pulangan, meaning opposite, contra. So if jualan dalam credit, pulangan will be in the debit side. Pulangan jualan, uh, 480. Okay. Lepas tu, your angkutan masuk. I told you angkutan, all the angkutan is a belanja. A belanja maksudnya will be in the debit side. Uh, I'm going to masuk 3, 2, 3. Okay, lepas tu your jalan. Hasil, hasil in the credit side. 18,772. And your promosi is a belanja. A belanja will be in the debit side. 1480 last your gaji. Gaji, debit, one three. Two, four, four. So you can see that I can finish this whole thing. Sangat cepat. Alright, if I show we throw it. If you go like H, and this is a M, this is a A, uh, this is a A, this is a A. Then commission detail or H, or we go one by one. Ba -ma 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 -ma. And then only. You do this whole thing and you need to write the whole thing again. You need to uh, insert the figure. And by the time you're done, it, huh? I know you can finish it. Very good. Clap for you first. But by the time you look up and look at your left, your right, I think your friends already go out and having their nasi lemak already at the canteen. All right. So you must be fast. That's the key. All right. So are we done yet? Not done yet. What is this thing? Imbangan duga. Have we proved that ini imbang? Belum lagi. How do we prove it? Jumlahkan. Alright. So, same thing. One line, double line. We just connect them. Then you jumlahkan everything in the debit side. Add, 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 add. Boom. How much? 46,000. 583, how come different? Huh? Okay, mine, and you boom, put it here. No, can you see or not? Correct, not my calculation. You see? Now, this is an example. So the debit side is 46,587, but my credit side is 47,947. Imbang da? Ta imbang. So when Ta imbang, then we have to check where is the kesalahan. Alright, so the first thing we can check is the first thing I would do lah. I will minus these two figure and see what is the perbezaan. How much difference? One three six zero. Oh. Right, so the difference between the debit side and credit side is one three six zero. Oh. So from this one three six zero. Oh, I will look into here. Is there a figure 1360? Okay, first look. Mm, eh? So fast, you get 1360. Is it not? 1360? 1360. So what happened to this 1360? Then you compare back to our own work done here. So uh, actually, what happened? Oh, okay. You, can you see or not? Can you see? Notice it. So, the 290 tangan, 1360, I didn't write it. And then there is a bank, 5820. This is actually for the bank. And then there is another 1360, I skip it. So, here I need to add for 29. First thing, this is a 29. How much? 1360. This is an asset. So it will be in the, uh, the debit side. So this one, I put it in the debit side. 1360. And then this 5820 supposedly before what? To know the bank. Bank. So this should be bank. 
Okay, then after that, you jumlahkan semua, the whole thing, and then you get 47,947, and it is inbound with your credit side, debit and credit side. And then no difference. Understand or not? If yes, you give me a U in the chat box. So this is the trick to it, right? So a lot of students, they make one mistake. What is that one mistake they always make? Is that when they're doing the solan, and then like just now, if happens to you, one of the students, eh, ta imbang oh. Okay, then you will stress. <laughs> you be, oh shit. Then you need, you go and find, 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 find. And then you still don't know how. You don't know the technique how to find. First thing, you don't know the technique to spot the mistake. So just now I already give you one of the technique is you minus and see what is the perbezaan, what is the difference. All right. The, the other technique you can use is your times two. If the first thing you cannot find the figure, you still let's say study other uh 1360. Oh. Let's say you still cannot find it, then maybe you can times two. And then you find a figure again. If you can't find a figure, maybe you divide by two. You use one three six zero oh, to divide by two. If with that you still cannot, then you leave it first. Or sometimes you can add up everything together again. You try to add up the whole thing. Maybe there's some calculation mistake. So if that one you still can't find it, then you skip it first. You move on to another question. Don't worry about it because the mark given to you. It's not based on your final answer. Okay? It's not like, oh, your final answer is the same with my schema jawapan, then you get full mark. No, it doesn't work that way. All right? So how do, how do they give you mark? They give based on your format. And then each of these things, let's say you're more than 25,000, you put in the correct place, in the credit side. Okay, then you got half mark for it or one mark based on uh, Brapple marker for that solan. So all this tiny, tiny thing add up together to get the whole chunk of mark, all right? So let's say if you want part missing out, so maybe you just minus one, two marks or three marks or four marks maximum. But imagine if because of this question, you put one hour just to find out that small mistake and you neglect, you don't have enough time for your following question, which is another 20 marks. Then you rugi yourself. Lah. So you don't do that stupid thing. Even though you can't find the mistake, you leave it first, you skip, you steady, make sure you are rational. You go to another question, you do, 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 and at the end, if you have time, then only you come back and solve this thing. Because apa yang kamu lose here, what your lugi sini is just maximum five marks. Maximum, but normally, if you thought imbang is maybe a small mistake, Maybe it will cost you about two or three marks. But maximum, I say maximum, five marks. So why do you want to trade these five marks for another question, which is 20 marks? It's a bad trade. All right, so you don't do that. You skip it. You do another question. Another question, finish holding. When you have time, relax, come back. Relax and fine. Do you get it? If yes, give me a yes in the chat box. All right, that's the question. So, uh, so do we have to erase everything to make space for the correction? Uh, you don't have to. All right, if you erase the whole thing, let's say tadi uh, you you got satu two nine kasini right? Okay, you miss out one part of the two nine, so uh, you can just squeeze into it lah. All right, you cannot like you erase whole thing, and then you just write a two nine and rewrite the whole thing. You don't have to do that, lah, all right? So maybe you can do something like that. So let's say this is a whole thing, right? Okay, then you can put here. Lah. Okay, you don't have to follow this uh, sequence. So Kaji, so here maybe you can, here you put uh, the, the two nine. All right. So here, let's say you the whole thing here, and then here you put two nine. Lah. And then only you jumla whole thing. Lah. All right. So let's say sometimes if you really put this thing already, and then you you figure out the other two nine lagi. So maybe you can just add here, and then you you write two nine small one. 
Like as long as it is clear, then it should be fine. You don't have to erase the whole thing. How you erase? You're using your ball pen uh, when you're writing an exam. So you cannot erase, right? So you just have to add into it. Is it all clear? If yes, you give me a C in the chat box, please. Right? Don't go and erase. Uh. You erase, I see it. I won't clap for you. I will slap you first. Okay, imagine the time you write the whole thing in your exam and then you go and erase it. You're, you're eating your own time now, brother. All right, so the smart thing you do is just to add at the bottom or you just squeeze into it as long as it's big, not really big, not too big, but clear. All right, the keyword is clear. Okay, so all clear. Mm, very good. Okay, so this is your imbang, imbangan duga uh, bentuk penyata. All right, so normally what you will see, um, there's no trend here. Okay, so for those from five students, you will know that your penyata kewangan questions will be from this imbangan duga. So normally they will give you imbangan duga and then from here, you need to do penyata kedudukan kewangan, account berdagangan, and account untung rugi. Right? So, it is very important for you to understand this thing. And why this one in the debit side? Why this one in the credit side? So, why? Because all these are asset, belanja, and ambilan. That's why it's in the debit side. And this, all these are in the credit side. Why? Because there are three chances. They are either modal or a hassle or a liability. You straight away know. Right? Because sometimes, let me give you an example. In the question, they will purposely give you a commission. Look at this thing. Huh? A very common thing so that you all can learn. Okay. They give you a commission here. And they don't tell you if it is a commission D buyer or a commission D terima. So you don't know if it's a belanja or hasil. So how do you know? So based on this imbangan duga, you can see that this commission is where? The figure is in the credit side. So if the figure is in the credit side, maksud there are three chances. It's either a L, a liability, a, a H, a hasil, or a M, a model. And a commission definitely not a model. And commission is not a liability. You get what I mean? So we know that this commission is a hassle. And if this commission is a hassle, we know that this commission is a commission D terima. Do you get what I mean? If yes, you give me a yes in the chat box. That's why you must learn this Abalim up. Ah. So it applies for everything. You see, right? They can just put a discount. Chonto, like this one, discount. So look at this thing. You can tell that this is a discount determiner on deeper, uh, discount delivery other determiner by looking at this one. 350 is where? In the credit side. Credit side is a hasil. Hasil means this discount is a discount determiner. Uh, all right, so it's that easy. This is Bangan Duga. So, in uh, this is question three. So, question three is a big question because look at this question three. All right. So, this question three, they give you this whole thing. All right, then what we have to do from here? We have to do Buku Tunai and Ledger. Right, buku tunai and ledger, then only kita menyediakan imbangan juga. So from here, so I think now we don't have uh, enough time for this question. So this question actually from all this thing, you put into this thing, and then from buku tunai and ledger, how do we change from this thing into the imbangan juga? Uh, so this is what we learn in next class. 
All right. So after this thing, you are done with the embankment to go. Of course, there's a question four. This question four is actually the system side, all right, to calculate the inventory. There are two ways. So uh, this one uh, I'll explain later. Lah. All right. So you can see this is the system inventory. You got system inventory per color and system inventory per turn. But this part is uh, not really penting, not that important, right? Because they hardly come out in the question or in the SPM. Right, but as I always say, we have to be hundred percent ready. So what do you, what do you mean by hundred percent? Meaning all the tiny things, all the part in your textbook, if they they are in your textbook, then we have to cover it. All right. So when you cover it, meaning we cover hundred percent, we have prepared hundred percent. So when the question comes out, doesn't matter apa yang keluar, we still can answer it. That's why here I don't spot question. I don't tell you, oh, I spot based on analysis from past 10 years, I can tell that uh, a very high chance that next year or this year, uh, okay, Jadwal Pusaman Prakana will come out. No, I don't do that. Because it's just 80% and keluar. What about the 20%? What if they don't come out and you only study this thing? Uh, then you, I'm pushing you to the uh, wall, right? So the best thing is you cover everything, you know everything by your head, you do exercises, all right? Starting from now, you don't wait until before exam. Lah. Because most students, they want to spot question. Why? Because they don't study before that. They don't prepare before that. Until exam comes, then only they, oh, suddenly they, they want, they're nervous. They want to rush to cover the whole thing. And then, of course, you can cover the whole Form 4 textbook and Form 5 textbook dalam satu hari atau satu minggu because there are a lot, 100 pages. And each part have different things. You need, to, you need time to understand it. All right? That's why they look for tips. They want shortcut. So, I know this one come out tomorrow in the exam, Chapter 6. Then, I only study ch Chapter 6. You get what I mean? So, tomorrow come out, bukan Chapter 6 though. Then fail. Uh, that's why you guys are different. Okay, you guys will be studying, preparing yourself, revision. Okay, but you don't have to do any revision. You just do what I give you, the homework. Right? So when you're done it, then you're actually preparing for your SPM. So when the SPM comes, you actually know a lot of things already. Okay, you don't have to rush for one chapter, rush for 10 chapters in one day. You really know you have, we have been learning all chapters since, all right? Then you just do some revision on some weak part. Uh, mana yang takut punya, then you do the revision on it. And then you see that your result comes out is better than the average. Uh, this is the, the, the secret, lah, all right? It's not really a secret, but this is how it works. Lah. This is how you should study. Lah. Not like those uh, suddenly you don't know anything and then you go and uh, hantam everything in one day. Uh, cannot. That's how I study also. I don't rush. rush. And I, I don't attend tuition in my Form 4, Form 5. I, I think starting from Form 1, I never attend any tuition. Until Form 4 and Form 5, I attended physics class and accounting. Because accounting, I took uh, extra subject for accounting. So... Because I'm a pure science student, so I took accounting as extra. So in sekolah, tak ada cikgu ajar saya. Therefore, I need to go for tuition. All right? So tuition for accounting and physics. Other than that, I don't have tuition at all. Uh, but how do I manage to study for all these things without tuition? Because in class, I pay attention. Uh, that is very important. In class, you pay attention. After that, you try to do the homework that the teacher gives. Even how bad the teacher is uh, bad at teaching, the homework is homework. You either know how to do or you don't know how to do. You get what I mean? If you don't know how to do, you ask your friend. You ask your teacher. If, they don't, if she doesn't teach, then you ask your friend. And then you try to understand by yourself. If you still cannot, then you must go to tuition. But make sure you don't do it last minute. You do it last minute, everything is too late. But if you do it now, at this point, then you still have time to revert everything, put things in line. Uh, that's how it works. All right. So that is the secret.
You ask all your, your smart friends, okay, those that score very high mark, that's how they do it. They just say, oh, I didn't study. You see them, they, they, every day they just play in class, don't need study. You think they really don't need study. They actually study, but they don't study like how you think they study. They don't go home, study from morning until night. They don't do that. But when teacher give them homework, they do. If you notice, sometimes maybe they, they are not good at one topic, then they will take out one hour or two hours in a day to understand the topic. And once they understand it, then okay, ready. And then they continue play. That's how it works. All right. So I think nothing much for today because I'll leave this uh, question, question three for next class because it's a big one. All right. So let me give you homework. So did you learn anything from just now? If yes, you give me a yes in the chat box. So sometimes it's not uh, everything about accounting, but I share with what I know. All right, I share with you. So those that I don't know, of course, I can't share. Lah, but what I know and it, what I use, how I, how I did, I can share with you. If it is suitable for you, then you can use it. All right. If you think it's not suitable for myself, then you look for another way that is better for yourself. All right. Because each of us is different, special. All right. Of course, special. Is there anyone with the same face in the world? The other, dalam dunia, hanya your muka yang satu saja. And then your fingerprint, 100% different. All right. So there is no one in the world that has the same fingerprint with my fingerprint. That's why everyone is unique, special. So if everyone is unique, different face, different size, then they have different character, different attitude, different learning ability, different way of seeing things. You get I me? Mean? So everything is different. So my way of studying, my way of getting A's, scoring good result, is my way. You get I me? Mean? So I'm just giving you uh, what, sharing with you what I did my way. And then you yourself, you have to go and explore it. You have to go see, eh, boleh tak? Uh, Wong punya uh, cara works on, my, on myself. Then you try. If you cannot, then you go and look for other way until you found your own way. You know what I mean? So you have to do it or else you always stay there. Right? You have to be out of your comfort zone. Okay, so your homework today, page one, three, one, two, question one, question two, question three, question four. And so one, two, three, four, all about the uh, Ibangan Duga. So the question one on page 131 is a very simple, simple exercise. It's just based on, based on Abalim. Isn't it? Yeah. So the question one is just like your Baki. Where should it be? Is it a debit or credit side? So you just write. Lah. If uh, the A is debit, you put debit. If it's credit, then you just write credit. Or a D or K will do. All right. So it's just that simple. One, two, three, four. And Lastly, go to page 118. Do question six. Is it? All right. So uh, the question six from page 118 is actually the account kawalan. Belum bayar and account kawalan belum terima. So you just do it and plus these four questions from today's topic in Mangandugo. So five questions in total. Right, so uh, you may leave, and I will see you in the next class. All right, so take care and goodbye.